<laughs> Welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the most electrifying game on the docket tonight. The Chicago Bears travel to the Washington Commanders as five and a half point dogs in a 44 and a half point over under game. In today's video, we're going to break down everything going on in the game, the key storylines, the key injuries, our favorite underdog squares, fantasy players, whether or not you should have them in your lineup, and who's going to win today's game. If you have not gotten an underdog yet, they have a free square for tonight's game. Justin Fields over half a yard. It's free. It's money. That's good for you, not for me. You have to be a first-time depositor to get it. If you go on underdogfantasy.com or download the app, first link in the description, use the code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. They'll double it and give you that free square. Justin Fields, 0.5, we'll give you a couple other ones towards the end of the video to pair with that. We've got no weather concerns. It's still nice. It's still early October. Nothing to worry about on that front. We do have to worry about the secondary for the Chicago Bears when we're talking about injuries. We've got Kyler Gordon out. We've got Jalen Johnson just ruled out and Eddie Jackson ruled out. They do have... Tevin Jenkins back on the line for Thursday Night Football, which could be big for the Chicago Bears. I don't know if anything's going to help this team right now. That entire secondary's out. They're already terrible to begin with. I was going to say, I don't know if any of those secondary injuries matter. If you told me, are these guys starters, I wouldn't have known if you're naming the Bears, if you're naming, like, maybe you're talking about the <laughs> Nebraska those, those football are good team. players. Those are good players, uh, especially relative to, to the Chicago Bears roster. You think, even though they're dogs, you think if they lose this one, the coach is gone? No. No, I almost feel like uh, with the Bears, there's no reason to do reactionary things right now because if, if they're like where you want to see how this thing plays out, I feel like if they're going to start putting new faces in, it's going to be at the end of the year. They're going to be like, let's wipe it clean, new coach, new this, new quarterback, all that kind of shit. But doing it right now doesn't make a lot of sense. I think going into the season, they had hopes they could be competitive, like kind of building off the momentum that Justin Fields had. But now that you're here, I think after four weeks, they're like, you know what? We're good at rebuilding. Let's just keep it going. Yeah, so <laughs> it's it's not great right now for the Chicago Bears. They're bi they're big dogs against the Washington Commanders. They have no real injuries right now. I think like Dotson and Curtis Samuel are dealing with like a little something something, but they should be good to go. So you've got a team that I think is just better than the Bears at full strength right now. When you look at like the storyline of the game, I don't think we really know what the Washington Commanders are. I think we just know the Chicago Bears stink. But Fields is coming off a really big game, right? Fields is coming off huge three hundred plus passing yard game. Four touchdowns, comes against the Denver Broncos. Like, how how fraudulent was that game? I think it's very fraudulent because it was through the air. Like, we Fields isn't like that. Like So he, you would have felt he, more comfortable if you put up, like, a 75 and one on the ground for yeah, fantasy purposes? 100%. And I still think that's in him. And that's kind of, like, why I still think he has value the rest of the season. But I don't think that's sustainable throwing 300. I mean, that was his first time ever throwing 300. It really makes you question, like, how bad... Is the Broncos and they have secondary. like one great corner? I know it's only like one out of eleven guys. Are like the other Jesus. ten stink. It's yeah. just like don't throw to that guy. Everybody else is open game. I mean, he's been disappointing. Fan I mean, I guess he hasn't been disappointing fantasy wise. I think you drafted him hoping that he would be more like what Jalen Hurts was last year, where he takes that step up. And I mean, even at the end of last year, he was like there were weeks where he was the QB one. And it it just doesn't feel like you're going to get a lot of these weeks where you feel great starting them. How many, the rest of the season, we have 13 more games, I think, right? We're four weeks in, 13 more games. How many top five fantasy finishes do we get out of fields? I don't think that many. I'll uh, put the over under at 1.5. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take the over then. My mind said three flat. I was going to, yeah, I think three is a good number. You think he'll finish as a top five guy three more times? Yeah, I mean, I, I still think Even he has Even that feels a little optimistic at this point. Probably. I think he still has it in the bag, but like... His floor is going to be a lot lower than what we're hoping for. I mean, there's going to be times where teams can either shut him down on the ground or, for whatever reason, the offense just doesn't cater to him using his legs. For I mean, some I think there's a real chance he could do it tomorrow, like tonight. Not saying he could. Well, I think it's just in his bag every given week. He's got Maybe. that shot. I think Washington's a lot better defense than what Fields has played for the most part up to this point. But I do kind of agree with what you said last week feels way less predictable than what we got out of Justin Fields like if we saw a vintage Justin Fields game 200 a touchdown plus 75 on the ground touchdown then I'd be like okay yeah. letting him open it up a little bit but I don't know what you could take from last week and be like they're gonna keep doing this I mean are we <laughs> sure that the commander's defense is good yeah, they feel pretty fraudulent that, if we're talking about things that are fraudulent okay I would I wouldn't say that they're 
great. I think their front seven and their run D is good. I think their secondary is still has a lot of work to to be done on it. So yeah. so maybe he feels come through the air, but I think on on the flip side, we've got another guy, Sam Howell, that we're not really sure of who he is. I'm on the I'm in the belief that like he'll do good against bad teams. He'll do bad against elite teams. He's had three good games. One really bad game against Buffalo a couple weeks ago. When he's under pressure, he takes a lot of sacks. He holds onto the ball forever. Him and Fields both hold onto the ball forever. Chicago dead last in pass rush, and that is like Sam Howell's weakness. When you look at the rest of Chicago, their entire secondary is banged up already. So it's like I don't I don't know what they're going to do on defense. Sam Howell can be bad and still be good in this game. I agree with the, exactly what you said. But all around, if I had to pick a side, I think he's a bad QB. Like he's got more interceptions and touchdowns on the year. If I had to go fifty one forty nine, I would go more good than bad really? for Howell. Like yeah. I don't even think you. He, think I think he's bottom ten. And like. Three years he'll be here. Three years. Let's say this season and the next one. You think he'll finish finish out next year with the Commanders? Yes. Yeah. I don't uh, think they're in a spot where they have like a lot of flexibility for movement. And I think they feel like comfortable enough I, with him right now. I could see if next year they're not good. They just like can Rivera, can be enemy. They're like, let's just sweep it clean. Going into next year or after next after year? After next season. So I guess I should have said that. After next season, do you think they're keeping him going into year three of, um, year four of his career? That's a lot of, like, predicting, but... I'll say, yeah. I, I, I think I've seen enough good from him that I feel like he could develop into a, a, a good player. I think with any young player, like, you're going to struggle against really good I think he's kind, really he could be, teams. like, Baker. Like, with the right perfect well, they look system. The same. Yeah. They're, like, built the same. No, they, they look, look the, same. the same, yeah. They do look the same. Like, They're built the same. shave off the same house. How was, like... I don't want to say he's more athletic, but he uses his rushing ability more for production. Like he's a, he's a good runner of he the probably football. is more athletic than Baker. Baker's like sh- like low key kind of athletic. He'll make some. Pl- he's not like gonna run for like thirty <laughs> yards in a game, but he'll make he some plays where is. you're like, okay, you're not like a, yeah yeah. He thinks he is more than he is, but how will like kind of how is but doesn't think he is probably. <laughs> yeah. That's like kind of the way I look at it. Um, the rest of the storylines, I I don't really know. It's like I guess we're not gonna figure out anything from the Washington defensive side of the ball because they're playing against Chicago. The wide receivers in Washington, I think Terry's getting more and more healthy, and you're starting to see him take over as more of the alpha. Dotson's been a wild disappointment. Robinson's taken over as the alpha in the backfield. There's, it, it feels pretty like plain cut and dry for the most part of this matchup. I will say it does feel like we got a mid-team versus a bad team. Can any of them break that narrative? Basically, that's what we're looking for. But in my what, what outcomes could you see from this game? Outside of like, okay, say the Bears win like 35 to 14 or something like that, you're like, okay, maybe they took a step. I don't really know if there's another outcome of this game where I feel like I learned something for, about a team. Like if Washington wins 31-14, to 14, do you really learn anything? You're like, nah, Washington's just better than Chicago. Chicago kind of stinks, right? I mean, it might tell you, like, could they compete for a wild card in the week NFC? Because they hung with Philly for up until overtime, obviously. Like, yeah. I don't know. I guess just to see, is there any shot commanders can make a playoff push? So it's more, yeah. Okay. Are they in the hunt? Yeah. This is just a classic Thursday night matchup. This, NFL yeah. feeding the shit. This is what we came here for. <laughs> this is what Amazon wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into the fantasy relevant players and check out where we've got them ranked. All of our rankings are available in our membership on bdge.co. We've got our weekly rankings. We've got our way wire rankings. We've got the private live stream that goes every Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, also available on the website, bdge.co to sign up. Let's talk quarterbacks. you got Fields as a guy who could potentially be in the top five. You've got him at QB8. Yeah, uh... I don't really think I need to defend myself a whole lot. He was QB2 last week. He's defend yourself. QB12 on the season still. I, I think this is a game where we finally, kind of like Jack said earlier today, like we might finally see that one big run from Justin Fields where he just dropped a 50-piece in a single play and we're like there's a nice five points to cash in on. And we might be running with a little bit of do logic there, but we feel real do. I would probably throw Fields maybe towards like the lower quarterback one range. I don't know. Who do you have uh, like directly behind him? You might find this bold. Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, Russell Wilson, Jared Goff. Okay. I, I, I don't know if I can necessarily make a good argument for any of the ones behind you just because the better it's, it's fantasy QBs bi-week. have. True that. It's a it's big a bye week and they get tough matchups. So yeah. I guess I can't argue too much against it. Uh, Howell at quarterback 16. So he's obviously playable in super flex. I think I have to play him in one or two of my super flexes. And I don't feel terrible about it going against Chicago. Nothing really else to talk about there. Yeah. Robinson's obviously comfortably a starter against Chicago. Let's talk Damn. about Herbert a little bit because Herbert – is someone who kind of just finally blew up and, like, took the reins back from Roshan Johnson. That's that's why I'm, like, I put him at, like, if you're desperate for a flex play, go for it. But it's tough. Like, he the first few weeks, it looked like Roshan's role was growing and growing and growing. And then, like you said, he took back the reins. He saw 79% of the snaps in week four. The first three weeks, he didn't go above 60. So it's like, I don't know what happened. It, I don't have the perfect answer for you. But it's kind of, I, I wonder if um, 
I wonder if they just like feel more comfortable with Herbert. So anytime they're like in a game, you know, like last week yeah. where they think, oh, we could win this. Let's just like give Herbert the ball and let him run. But if we're getting our asses whooped, like let's see what Roshan can do. It does feel like a lot of garbage time goes for Roshan. So I don't really argue against it. He's not someone I'm excited to get into my lineup, even with the big performance last week. How do you feel? Because I have right behind him like Najee. You have behind you have Najee behind Herbert. I feel nothing so- when you say Najee to me. <laughs> yeah, like I feel no. Who's Najee play? They, they do play the Ravens. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I don't. Najee's really due for a rushing touchdown for sure, but like, I, God, I don't want to play Najee. Yeah, so I think he's worth the flex play, but this is not something I'm pushing. Where oh yeah, he's a must start in the top twenty four by any means. Okay, so we move to the wide receivers. We've got DJ Moore, the only guy you can even look his way. Um, what about uh, Darnell Mooney? Any interest in Darnell Mooney? Dude, so I was looking at his props, and okay. over 30 yards felt pretty good. He finished two games a season, three games a season, excuse me. He's gone over it in two of the three, and no Chase Claypool. The GOAT is out, yeah. Like, this is not a guy I'm playing, so I didn't I didn't even throw him in there. Like, I don't think anyone in any league you could start him, but... A little prop action, though? He could be someone that, like, just has some stupid game where all of a sudden you're convinced to take him on the waivers in the following week. He's like a random... He's a good player that could randomly pop off yeah. on, a, like, a... Any given Sunday kind of thing, any given Thursday kind of thing. Mooney's Mooney's been there before. He's been a good NFL player. So I, put up one K before. I think I think you could do. Yeah, it's pretty fucking wild. I want to do a trivia. Actually, it's like the most random people ever to put up a thousand yards in a season. I don't know how we'd quantify Kyle that, Pitts. but fucking Michael Gallup. I think DJ Moore is in line for a pretty big game. I mean, we'll we'll get into it later in in terms of uh, underdog slips, but I don't know. He's he's been very like boomer bust, and he has been boomer like. To the T. I feel like he's been kind of good, though. In week one, he had, like, two targets, and then against the Chiefs, they didn't do anything. So, it's, like, yeah. two games, he just shit the bed. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's only, like, he's only like two th- for four in, to- in terms of, like, you I- felt good about starting him, but... I thought the last three games he did well. I think, no, I this, think this feels Chiefs, like a boom for like, DJ Moore, though. Fields had 99 passing yards. Mm. But did he not go, like, 50 and a touchdown? Check. I'm pretty well, sure. I think that was one of his boom weeks. Oh, okay. If sense. I'm not mistaken. I thought that was sandwiched in between his two good weeks. You can check, though. So, week four, nine for 131. Week three versus the Chiefs, six for 41. So, de- no six touchdown? For 41 and a tutty. Oh, and a tutty. Yeah. yeah. Damn, okay. And oh, week two was also good. Yeah, and then he went seven for That's what I mean. Like, the last three games have all been super usable for fantasy. All like, right, PPR, DJ. that's like 15 or 16. Oh, sorry. It was three for 41. So, yeah. with the tutty, it's still nice, but I, I read targets. Three for 41. Yeah, that's playable. I mean, I got him in the wide receiver two range for sure. I think it's uh, Washington's gives up the 11th most fantasy points to wide receivers. So, I mean. I just feel like he's the only, like, somewhat stable piece right now in that passing game where he'll get the targets. He's been doing good enough, you know. They brought him in to be the one. Again, I had just have to throw that in there, you know. Can never have enough of that in there. (laughs) Um, You have Terry at 24. You've got Dotson at 43. Dotson's, like, done for. Yeah, he's, like, Like, droppable That's, like, giving him respect. Yeah, makes me sick. Still hoping. Yeah. Still, still. Holding on to it's that. It's like weird we're giving him, like, hype. name value value, and he shouldn't really have any. I know. Like it's like we hyped him up to a point where, like, it was it, the value is so much further than his name yeah. so that it got him name value, <laughs> exactly. and now we're holding on to it. <laughs> we're delusional. Yeah. We like can't just, go. It's only a month. We can't go back on, like, like four months. Being in this of office has up. ruined us yeah. with, with certain players, and Dotson is clear fucking proof of that. I mean... <laughs> Is he unplayable against the Bears? <laughs> you know, oh, dude. like Chase Claypool he's, out. <laughs> he's wide. Rec- <laughs> he's wide receiver sixty one. And last last week he got like a touchdown that probably boosted him probably forty spots. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's not. He's yeah. No, don't don't fucking start Jahan Dawson. But I think you can comfortably start DJ Moore and Terry McLaurin as he's you know getting ramped up more and more from the turf toe. It seems like he's completely over that. Flip side, Cole Komet. I, I'm kind of low on Komet. Yeah, he's coming say, off of two 14, touchdowns. 14 feels a little low. He is coming off of two touchdowns. But he, wasn't he shitty as hell before that? Before that, he's not gone over seven fantasy points. So it's like... You know what Kyle Pitts' is season high in fantasy points is? It's less than that. It's like 6.2. Yeah. Ever? No. Oh, in the, this year. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were like, no way. It's believable. <laughs> oh, and the commanders give up the fewest fantasy points to nice. tight ends. The, I have least Not the most right least. Yeah. <laughs> most the least. fewest to tight ends. So it's like... To be fair... I don't know this off the top of my head, but like, who are the this tight ends? This is about to be a bar right now. <laughs> Sorry. That is, I mean, Dallas Goddard last week. Goat. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox. You can maybe argue that's like competing against each other, so it's hard for one of them to have a good week. But and then the Washington, you're saying? Yeah, Zach Ertz. He kind of, kind of, he was kind of nice this year. 
nicer than he should be. Yeah. So they haven't faced no Cole Komet without <laughs> Chase Claypool yet. <laughs> they have but not. that's the thing. There's like the Cole Komet's not the guy who does who makes that argument. You no, know? he's like not. Yeah. yeah, I just want him to. I'm no, fine 14. with it. Komet just seems like he falls into that range from nine to fucking twenty nine, where it's just like if he scores a touchdown, he's gonna be really good. If he mm. doesn't, he's getting you fucking three points. Exactly. He's actually the guy who, looking at underdog lines, like feels like they're too low on him. Like, we were talking about Darnell Mooney being too low. It's like, oh, he could pop off. Like I think I really like the Mooney line. I think I'm with no case <laughs> Claypool. <your> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to go with, like, somebody who's not DJ Moore in this offense, I'd feel more you comfortable. feel comfortable with that? Yeah, I mean, their lines, are I think, are relatively close. I don't remember exactly, but I think yeah, I would take at, Mooney like, over Komet in yardage. I want to say they're, like, in yard- the same. I mean, yeah. in yardage, it's a little different, but they're both at, like, three receptions. I mean, I'll double-check it, but I feel yeah. like I feel like they're they're both labeled similar. All right, well, we'll check it now because we're going right into it with uh, the underdog squares of the Thursday night football night of the big night. Justin Fields, 0.5 square. It's free. It's sitting there, double-cheeked up for you. Go sign up. Promo code BDGE will get you a double deposit plus that free square. The non-free square that I will give you is Sam Howell higher than 17 fantasy points. Again, I'm just a believer that he'll do well against the shitty team in the Chicago Bears who have the worst pass rush in the league. And they're probably bordering on the worst secondary given the health of their secondary right now. Sam Howell is a runner. He is athletic. He can get, you know, uh, the 10 to 20 to 30 rushing yards on a given night, which gives you an extra couple fantasy points. Every quarterback that Chicago has played against has put up either 300 yards or three touchdown passes. They've accumulated zero interceptions from the opposing starting quarterbacks. Blaine Gabbert threw two when Mahomes came out for Literally a second. Gabbard got in there. What's your and, stat line prediction? I'm going to say he throws for 220 yards, two touchdowns, and um, 16 rushing yards. I think no matter which way you break it, pretty much, two touchdowns, one through the air, one through the one on the ground, will yep. get him over. Like, 17 is not a very high mark if you have an efficient day. And I don't imagine him not having an efficient day against the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Dude's also been just tearing it up on the ground. 13 yeah. and a half rush yards, pretty interesting. It is. Just throwing it out there. You could take it. You got freedom for another four days. In this in this slip, I can't at least because you already have Sam Howell. So I'm going to go with DJ Moore to have more than four receptions. I mean, we were already talking about how sneaky. Switched over from the targets? Yeah, the targets went up half a target. Mm. It went from five and a half to six. Now you need seven. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I feel you. So I'm just going to go with the receptions. Uh, He's coming off a game against Denver with eight. Uh, He had six against uh, Tampa Bay. But the dude's getting targets. 22 targets last three games. That's about seven average. So uh, they're making sure to at least throw the ball his way. I kind of feel like they're going to get him started around the line of scrimmage. This feels like a just get the ball in DJ Moore's hand type of game. No Chase Claypool. No Chase Claypool, of course. (laughs) I don't have any stats. I don't have any stacks to back that up. But Commanders' pass defense not been great this year, and I also think that the Bears' defense being so bad probably helps this line. I mean, they're letting up like thirty-four points a game. The Bears are so, and just just game script wise, Sam Howell about to be a movie. <laughs> he is about to. <laughs> he's about to be a goddamn trilogy. <laughs> but um, Justin Fields is going to have to respond. The Bears' offense is going to have to respond. This feel it feels like a good matchup. DJ Moore has been used a lot. So I, I'm not. Thinking about this too hard, I'm just riding DJ Moore, number one target for the Chicago Bears. Just, just be good, and I'll get it. Yeah, have a just, good day. You don't have to be good. You just got to kind of be average. Yeah, do your thing. I'm taking uh, Brian Robinson, hopping back to the Commanders. We didn't even really talk about it. like I feel like having him as RB eight. Dude, was I was gonna high. bring that up, but then you pivoted to we started talking about Herbert. That's pretty high. No? I thought that was yeah, <laughs> yeah. real high. Yeah. I like I like it. I mean, he's I feel like he's finished really high. Similar to Howell, like, if you put him in good matchups, he pretty much fucking eats. Philly and Buffalo are really tough run defenses, so wasn't really surprised. that he, he's, Even in those, I feel like he's been either efficient or scored or, like, yeah. did okay. They're giving him the work. I'm taking mm-hmm. him over 12 fantasy points, basically 11.85. He's gotten this in three out of four games. Chicago gives up the second most fantasy points to running backs. That's – what else do you need to hear? Another small little piece. I'm not putting any money on it, but his receiving line's like seven yards. I like that. The Bears give up the most receiving yards to running backs. So now you're that telling c- me Antonio that could Gibson's be the Antonio in Gibson play. game. I wanted to take the under yardage. He's at 38 and a half, which I feel like he hasn't hit since like week one against a really shitty team. You talking about Gibson? Yeah, Total yards? he's at Bears. 35 now. Oh, it went down. Yeah, My, the only thing is like the game script is so in favor of Washington that I could see Gibson getting. 
like multiple drives just to himself and like one big play kind of fucks you, even though I'd still take the lower if, if I needed to. Uh, I really like Brian Robinson to get in the end zone, and if the script of the game does play out how we think it will, the commanders are up, they can run the ball. That's, we need that's a little how, how will to be Rob uh, receiving touchdown. Yeah. That's uh, what we need. Is this like cute. even, just to go on your point, I feel like, in a no matter what the game script is, positive, neutral, behind, like I think they're just going to use B Rob. Yeah, I think that's where he's at. That's his role in the offense now. They yeah. just hate Gibson. You love to see it for good reason, honestly. All right, let's do some game predictions. Uh, if you could tell by my attitude the entire video, I'm just completely off Chicago, which means I'm on Washington minus five and a half, lay the points at home. Over 44 and a half. They're going to score points. Justin Fields might score a few points. It's it's just not a very high mark to get to. It's not like either of these defenses are stifling. A couple bad teams throwing up some fucking Yahtzee balls down the field. Washington minus five and a half over 44 and a half. Ditto. Tony? You're just copy paste. <laughs> do you think there's any chance this game's like actually like electric and we're like, this is actually. I, I actually do think. It'd be cool. Is. Yeah. Maybe I'm just trying to convince myself that and give myself they have hope. enough like exciting players you know yeah. i feel like sometimes the thursday night football games that suck usually suck because it's like the jets where it's like Maybe oh we Amazon have to watch is like we want zach this wilson one. you think that, yeah like, it I wasn't like it. you have to have them it's like they picked it out they pick as soon as chase claypool is out they're like we need this on thursday night right. football no, he was probably the reason they wanted in the first place <laughs> they're like we got swindled no claypool we're out we're giving this game to peacock <laughs> Five and a half felt pretty good. It was like six and a half earlier. Was it? Yeah, and I was scared it was going to go to seven, but it actually went the opposite way. So I'm all in on the minus five and a half. I feel a little nervous if it was up to six and a half. That's pretty, it's a big number. That is a big number. I I kind of want to take the Bears here. When in doubt, good teams win, great teams cover. Washington, definitely not a great team. I would feel say, a lot better with six than five. But five and a half is just like a weird number. Who do, Who's Washington's second win? Their second they, win? They started two and oh. Oh, the Broncos. Yeah. They beat the Broncos. Okay. Broncos beat Bears. So, okay, nice. by that math, Bears are getting skunked. But uh, I, I really like the over in this game, too. I just think there's going to be a lot of points. I do think this is going to be a sneaky, exciting game. It feels like both teams are bad enough to where there'll be a lot of points. Like you were saying, there's there there are exciting players in this game. But also, both teams like kind of feel like they could flounder a lot in this game. You know, so Wide, wide range of outcomes, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Again, maybe it's just Thursday. We got nothing else better to do. I'm just praying that this is a shootout just to watch something cool. But What are you taking? I'm going to take the over. I'm going to take the Bears plus five and a half. Like you said, great teams cover. Chicago Bears, great <laughs> team. Jahan Dotson, <laughs> great player. Breakout game incoming. Jamo, I, mean. I might take it. <laughs> I'm going to fuck around and say that the Bears win this game. Okay. All right. Okay. For real? Yeah. Just they get their first one in the season. Dude, is everybody isn't everybody on the commanders this week? For yeah, because the Bears are terrible. Yeah. They are terrible. I mean the commanders just went like toe to toe with Philly. Right, but they, they got their heart broken. They were on they were two yards away from winning that game and Ron Rivera was like, No, we're gonna go to overtime. If anything, the commanders You wanna talk about it to a coach that needs to go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ron he, That's why he Howell lost might the team. Be gone. He put his ass in team. a boat. Meanwhile, Eberflus? They're used to <laughs> they're <laughs> used loose. to losing their He's rallying. They, they've never had a coach before. <laughs> <laughs> He's the difference today. <laughs> Yo, what if Eberflus is like, all right, you know what, Fields? Like, you can run it. I'm done holding yeah. you back. Fly. <laughs> You're Fly not my little to pass angel it. Die. <laughs> Yeah. Eberflus is like, I've been I've been holding this secret <laughs> weapon named Justin Fields. I'm gonna unleash him. JMO, take us away. Peace. It gets worse every time <laughs> somehow. <laughs>